In order to obtain the thermodynamical potential relevant to the canonical ensemble, we want something whose differential, that is, its variation, is still a function of v and n, but that replaces the dependence on s by a dependence on t. That is, we want to find a potential which behaves just like u, except for the fact that t and s are swapped. To do this, we need to apply to u a mathematical procedure known as Legendre transformation. The Legendre transform has lots of applications in many fields of physics and mathematics, but as far as we are concerned, it will simply mean that we will define a new quantity, f, as the difference between u and the products of the two quantities that we want to swap, that is, t and s. So the differential of f will then be dF equals du minus s dt minus t ds, where we have applied the product rule to the second addendum. Substituting du in this expression, we obtain dF equals t ds minus t dt plus mu dn minus s dt minus tds. These two guys cancel each other out, and therefore we obtain that the differential of f does not depend on s as an independent variable. It only depends on t, n, and v. Therefore, df is just minus p db plus mu dn minus s dt. just like we expect from a thermodynamic potential in the canonical ensemble. Just like the entropy in the microcanonical ensemble, its derivatives allow us to compute all the thermodynamical quantities which we are not already fixing, such as t, u, and s. The derivative of f with respect to v, performed keeping all the other independent variables constant, df dv, is minus two, while df dt is minus s, and finally, df dn is 2. This thermodynamic potential is called the Helmholtz free energy, from the name of the scientist which developed it. If this still sounds a little confusing, don't worry, it will hopefully all sound much clearer once we have actually introduced the canonic ensemble and after that we have seen a few exercises in it. Finally, the last thermodynamic potential we will need is the one relative to the grand canonical ensemble. That is, we want a thermodynamic potential whose derivative depends on t, v, and the chemical potential mu instead of t, v, and the number of particles n. To replace the dependence on n with the dependence on mu, we simply repeat the procedure which gave us the Helmholtz free energy. That is, we just apply the Legendre transform once again. We define omega equals f minus mu n, and then we compute its differential. This is d omega equals df minus n d mu minus mu dn. Again, applying the product rule on n mu. And if we use the definition of df, we obtain minus p dv plus mu dn minus s dt minus n d mu minus mu dn. Now, again, these two guys cancel each other out, and we are left with minus p dv minus s dt minus n d mu. This quantity omega is called the Landau potential, or simply the grand potential. The derivatives of omega behave just like the derivatives of f. That is, the omega in dv is still minus the pressure. The omega in dt is still minus the entropy. And the only difference, of course, is that the derivative of omega with respect to mu is minus n, rather than the other way around. It is these three thermodynamic potentials, s, f, and omega, that we will try and compute from the Hamiltonian H, and that will allow us to compute all the other thermodynamic quantities of various systems.